Hello, everybody. This is Minder Chen from Martin Business School of Business Economics at CSU Channel Island. In this video lecture, we're going to discuss business strategy and and its relationship with information technology. The discussion will be based on several strategic planning model, um, all from Professor Michael Porter's from Harvard Business School. The first one is based on the analysis of industry structure and its five competing force. Uh, the most important one. The second is based on three generic competing business strategies. The third is the analysis of the value chain within an organization. We'll also um, talk about business process and and it will be used in business process or engineering, which will be another module. Eventually, all of this will be leading to the development of information system. The job of business strategist is to understand and cope with competition. And when there's a fierce competition, then it will affect the profitability of an organization. And certainly, um, company need to look out for all the competing force, which could be from the customer, the supplier, the potential entrance, and substitute product. And, and certainly, they are rivalry within the same industry. Uh, they are considered part of the competing force as well. So analyzing those competing force and, and understand the industry structure is important for us to shape our business strategy. In some industry, the competing force are very intense, such as airline, textile industry, hotel, etc. And not many companies can earn very attractive return on investment. They are industries such as software industry, soft drink, at least by Michael Porter, um, that the competing force um, are benign. And so many companies can be quite profitable. And once again, this competing force within an industry will affect company's profitability and its competitiveness in in the long run. And certainly company need to understand its industry-wide structure and to decide what will be the best strategic positioning of the firm within this industry. This is Porter famous five force competing force model. Um, first is the rivalry among existing competitor, which is pretty obvious. So we're not going to discuss this that much. Um, the, the second one is um, the buyer or the supplier. And the third so that will be the second and the third force. The fourth competing force will be the threat of substitute product or services that may actually compete with our existing product and service. The last, not the least, is the threat of new entrants who may enter from other industry and enter into our existing industry. We will first discuss uh, the buyer and supplier uh, with a little bit more focus on the buyer side in terms of competing force. And we try to measure the competitiveness of our company against buyers, which may include our channel or the end users. We usually use the term called entry barrier if we can build an entry barrier, then it's 
more difficult for a potential buyer to compete with us by entering into our industry to, uh, instead of buying product from us they would actually uh, integrate upstream start to producing the product they used to purchase from us uh, by themselves but if we can build an entry barrier with intellectual property uh, that they have to get it from us or other means um, the entry barrier will be much higher so we also measure um, the bargaining power based on something we call a switching cost if it's very expensive for the buyer to switch then the bargaining power for the company over here would be much higher and much better so the company would be much more competitive um, I'll just give a quick example for instance there's a company used to call American Hospital Supply they actually uh, develop an online purchasing system this is actually before the internet time and they place those system into many hospitals so hospital procurement um, personnel can use the system ordering hospital supply from American hospital supply the system actually is called ASAP and and because of that it's very difficult for those hospitals to switch to another supplier because the procurement system is tightly integrated with American hospital supplies internal system that gives the American hospital supply uh, a competitive edge which means the switching costs for those hospitals are quite high and this is actually an example we often use to describe what we call strategic information system so this online procurement system developed by American hospital supply is considered a strategic information system so let's look at um, this two competing force from buyer and suppliers uh, a little bit more loyalty program is an example of an information system very complicated information system which will increase the switching cost for a customer to switch because they're they're going to uh, lose a lot of their frequent mileage um, and, and points from this loyalty program if a user adopts assistance uh, from us it would actually increase their switching cost to any other technology or similar technology and if some of the data has been captured and stored in an information system developed by a firm it will be a little bit more difficult for its customer to convert the data or information to another environment and therefore increase the switching cost they may have already paid for a long-term contract so it will be difficult for the customer to switch and finding a new supplier um, from the customer's viewpoint can be quite costly and that is part of the switching cost so so because of that um, a lot of customer will not change easily the barrier to entry other than the so-called switching cost we talk about uh, there are some other barrier to entry um, by either buyer or supplier and for instance supplier side if we um, if we place a large quantity order which will give us e economy of scale and because of that uh, the supplier will be very difficult for our supplier to decide not to work with us on the demand side if a company has large user uh, such as in the social network application 
it will be very difficult for those users to switch because there's something we call a network effect. A lot of your Facebook friends are on the Facebook, and when you if you move to another platform, it's very very difficult for you to move all of them. Then it kind of defeat the purpose to move by all by yourself. ERP is an example that uh, companies spend a lot of money in terms of train their people to learn how to use the software, redesign their business process to adapt to the new software, and try to switch to another software which may have a different business model, underlying business model can be very costly. So there are many reason why uh, they are high barriers for either the buyer or supplier to enter into the marketplace. And they're all listed here. I want you to kind of review some of them yourself. And Porter has another article talking about the impact of internet on um, business strategy. Um, it's a actually a very good example of looking at how technology may affect our business strategy and based on this five force model. So we're going to look at only this buyers as a competing force, including the marketing channel and the end user. I'm going to blow this up to look at the impact of internet to the buyer. Okay. As indicated here, uh, if you look at for the sales channel that if your company here for your sales channel, you we can actually go direct and eventually eliminate powerful channel. Therefore, it increases our bargaining power against our channel. However, for the end user, since they can easily um, search and find alternative sourcing providers uh, on the web, uh, because switching is pretty much one click away, therefore, they are in power. So the bargaining power um, is shifted to the end consumer. They have much better bargaining power against us. Therefore, the internet or the web-based e-commerce is reducing a company's bargaining power towards its end user. However, it increases the bargaining power of a company uh, to its channel. Let's look at another competing force, which is a very interesting one called threat of substitute product or service. And, and by the way, before we do that, um, just try to um, point it out that in, in the commodity industry, which means in industry, its product are considered commodity. The rivalry is often very severe. Let's use um, Pedroid. Pedroid produced uh, is known for its instant camera. Um, has a long history. It's considered one of the very innovative firms for quite a while, at least historically. Um, if you study Pedroid history, you will find out there are several substitutive product or service that cause its downturn. So think about it. And first of all, um, the instant camera certainly give you the so-called instant gratification. Gratification, uh, so you can see, print the picture pretty much right on the spot. Although the quality may not be the best, but right away you can kind of see the printed picture. And in, in the past, you actually have to develop the film. So what are the two substitutes, either product or services, that have caused the downfall of Pedroid. The first one, at least in my research, I found that the first one is 
not camera, not digital camera, but the one hour photo development shop. Because for most the people, um, they don't they can wait for an hour. One hour is fast enough. So um, many years ago, uh, there's a lot of so-called one hour photo development shop popping up in different places. It used to be you have to go to a photo development center. It would take them a few days to actually develop the photo. But with those fast photo development machine used by those one hour photo development shop, they can quickly develop the photo for you within an hour. So that's the first blow to Platteroy. The second one certainly will be the so-called digital camera. And the digital camera, the digital camera um, certainly give you the instant graph gratification, which um, eventually replace Petroid and Petroid um, a few years ago filed for bankruptcy. It may be still hanging there um, but not certainly not doing as good as it used to be. And why company who who would very successful such as Pedroy um, eventually got uh, defeated by some of the what we us usually call disrupted technology and this chart is showing actually um, a, a generic model showing that a lot of those disrupted technology such as digital camera when it first came out the quality um, of the product or service may not be very good. So company who are uh, dominating the existing industry or market um, then they usually do not pay attention to it. Um, gradually they are um, picking up those dis disrupted emerging technology start to improve uh, a lot of those mainstream company uh, still don't consider them seriously because uh, they this disrupted technology can be used for low end kind of market um, with low profit margin and cannot really compete those mainstream products uh, in the high end market. However, those disrupted technology usually use some innovative technology, sometimes off, even off-shelf uh, off sh technology. And, and those technology tends to improve rapidly comparing to the ma more mature technology used by accessing product or services. So before too long, those disruptive technology outperform the existing technology used by the mainstream um, market provided by existing firm. So you will find a lot of successful company uh, just did not anticipate such disruptive technology and eventually cause its downfall. The two types of innovation, one is called sustaining innovation, which is kind of a continuous improvement. Uh, as example will be the fuel in injection engine, which is kind of evolutionary instead of um, revolutionary. Um, and an innovation that usually is not uh, expected um, by the mainstream vendor but nevertheless um, they d eventually will affect the existing market. For instance uh, when Ford came up with Model T was really really low price very affordable it um, basically overtakes um, it, an existing market of some other 
equipment automobile manufacturer before them. Uh, I strongly encourage you to read um, Bauer and um, Christensen's article on disruptive technology from Harvard Business Review. Uh, Christensen um, has published a book called Innovator's Dilemma, basically talk about uh, the phenomena that a lot of good firms just did not, uh, who, who may be very innovative um, for quite a while, but when in disrupted technology occur, usually they somehow did not pay attention to it and and eventually um, they got defeated by the, such disrupted innovation. One reason is that invest in new technology and innovation costs a lot of money. And the cash cow those company cash cow product those company may have um, did not want to actually give resources to the R&D department, to this new division building this innovative technology. Um, they see this as a waste of resources and money and affect their uh, grasp of the existing marketplace. The last competing force in Porter's model is the threat of new entrants. You'd be probably surprised by how many cases that, particularly in the IT industry, that um, company from a different industry has moved to a different industry and become a very competitive force. For instance, in this case, Pepsi uh, used Aquafina and entered the bottled water industry. And Microsoft, after quite a few years of seeing internet and web being used, and finally turned around and decided to extend its existing product and to embrace the internet. And there's a report from the Business Week um, regarding the story behind this change of mindset inside Microsoft. Uh, the strategy at Microsoft is referred to as embrace and extend. Apple is considered the most innovative company in the last decade. And in Apple's case, um, it has actually entered into several different industry by introducing new product in, in a different new category. So let's look at just some of the inno innovative products or service developed by Apple in the last decade. Apple Computers in. Um, first they have, they started with actually a personal computer. Apple, Apple II. In 1984, they developed the so-called Mac and eventually the iMac. In 2001, um, they developed a software. Uh, actually, they acquired a small software firm by their former employee. Uh, the software is called SoundGen and eventually developed a product based on that software called iTunes. And iPod was announced and available uh, later in the same year, November 2001. And certain iPad can use iTunes to manage the software uh, on a Mac or even on a PC. iTunes Store, uh, don't confuse iTunes Store with iTunes. Uh, iTunes Store is online music selling platforms um, that developed in April 2003. And five years later, iPhone, the smartphone from Apple, um, made a big hit. 
and and then three years later in in 2010 app ipad was announced and apple started to sell it and it's one of the most successful product in apple's history if i may go back um in may 2001 apple opened its first retail store called apple store uh, at Tyson's Corner in Northern Virginia. And at that time, Apple wanted to get into retailing because um, not many computer stores are willing to carry its product. Remember, around 2000, and I think Steve Jobs took over Apple the second time as a CEO around 19. 1996 or 7 and for three or four years Apple was struggling quite a bit and that's why creating a retail store is an Apple strategy of try to actually have their product out there for people to see let's look at what industry may have been interrupted by Apple's introduction of some of the new product you mentioned here. And first of all, Apple actually um, changed its name now uh, from Apple Computer Inn to Apple Inn to reflect it's not just a computer company anymore. I did mention the Apple II um, in the late 70s um, was a very successful product in 84 Mac is kind of a, a graphical user interface based operating system PC uh, it was also a very successful product and eventually with the internet iMac was introduced later with iPad iTunes and iTunes store together um, the iPod pretty much disrupted the mp3 player um, we, we don't hear much about other mp3 player nowadays was iTunes store on um, tower record uh, a music CD DVD seller would put pretty much out of business because iTunes store allow people to download music online um, pay maybe 99 cents per piece of music Apple Store later would discuss is actually a very successful retail business for Apple. iPhone plus the iTunes Store allow the user to download application which enhance the smartphone's function from Apple. iPad plus the iTunes Store, I should put it iTunes store here and additional app in particular iBook um, pretty much disrupted the so-called e-readers and and also the sales of notebook computer um, has been dropped quite a bit because of the popularity of iPad Apple just renounced iRadio and uh, it's rumors say that they're working on ITV, iWatch, or wa i whatsoever. What make Apple potentially a very successful firm to come up with those n innovative products is because not only Apple pay attention to be assistant by integrating hardware, software, and and content and service. Um, it also developed an ecosystem through their iTunes store, through the development by third-party apps to enhance its product's functionality. Apple stores, um, the design of Apple store is not really by their product, the layout of the store is actually by how some of their product may be used and Apple actually has a very intensive control of how the employee may be interacting with the customer uh, they have 
very specific scripted training for customer service rep for the technical support guy and as a result in, in a study um, reported in New York Times as reference here Apple's annual per square feet um, sales is about close to six thousand US dollars and Tiffany by comparison very successful high-end retailer is only about a little bit more than half of it about three thousand uh, dollars per square feet um, however if you work at um, Apple store the pay is um, not as high as, as people may have uh, imagined 